Chapter 3, The Review Process. In 2009, the CUSP decided to review the convention in two five-year cycles. In the first cycle, from 2010 to 2014, the review process will cover Chapter 3 of the UNCAC on Criminalization and Enforcement, and Chapter 4 on International Cooperation. The review will x-ray domestic bribery, foreign bribery, embezzlement, money laundering, liability of companies, whistleblower protection, mutual legal assistance, and more. The review process follows a very tight six-month schedule. It involves one, a self-assessment by the country reviewed, two, a dialogue about implementation between that country's representatives and a review team, and three, the country review report. At the start, generally among officials of the foreign ministry, the justice ministry, or the anti-corruption agency, the country reviewed appoints a focal point to coordinate the review process in country and to communicate with the secretariat. The names of the focal points are generally included among the list of country review experts that UNODC publishes on its website. The country reviewed has one month to fill out the self-assessment checklist using a special software. Governments are given the option to publish the checklist by ticking a box on the first page of the software. They are also encouraged to consult with civil society in preparing their checklist responses. It may be helpful to approach the government to remind them to do this. One month after the government submits its self-assessment, the review team submits to the Secretariat the outcome of its desk review and begins a period of dialogue of about two months with the country reviewed. If the country reviewed agrees, the review team may visit the country to meet with government officials and people who are knowledgeable about the situation in the country. The basic structure of a country visit would be to use the occasion of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, contact uh, in order to provide final clarifications, perhaps probe a bit more into some of the responses that the country and the review has provided, get a better understanding of uh, not so much the framework or the legislative basis for the implementation, but also how implementation works on the ground. By month five, the review team experts are expected to submit to the country review the draft of the country review reports following a fixed blueprint. Then the secretariat incorporates all the comments received and sends the amended report to the review team, which agrees on a final report and prepares an executive summary. These documents are then sent to the reviewed country for approval. In case of disagreement, the rules require a dialogue between the reviewed country and the review team to arrive at a consensual final report and its executive summary. Unfortunately, only the executive summary must be made public, and the full report is kept confidential. It's important that the whole report is being made available to all. Only in this way can information be passed, in this way can information be shared by all, and only in this way um, can um, society at large determine uh, how the country is faring in its fight against corruption and which are the areas that require additional attention. Keeping this report secret would not make sense.